We just parked. Where, where, where are we? So this is called Kigali Height. It has shops. It has uh, a very nice coffee that I like. Uh, I need it's, coffee. It's Java coffee. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you will also know that Rwanda has one of the best coffee in terms of quality. So I've <laughs> this, traveled... The reason I'm laughing because every time I go to a coffee producing country, they yeah. say, we have the, the best, best coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're heading to a country that is full of surprises. In fact, so much that if you turned it into a drinking game where you should take a shot every time I told you something you didn't know, you'd be quite plastered by the end of this episode. So grab your shot glasses, your bags and your sense of adventure. We're about to dive into the real stories, meet the locals and get a feel for the true spirit of this surprising place. My name is Palabo and this is the Radio Vagabond, rising from the ashes, Rwanda's remarkable rebirth. This is Radio Vagabond. So now I'm in a car in uh, Kigali, Rwanda, and uh, I was just picked up by a friend of a friend, and now a friend of mine too. Hi, Stefan. Uh, hi, hi, Pelle. Yeah. And uh, and we just dropped off your two boys. They're going to karate. Yeah, they they so like karate. They have started uh, since October. Yeah, so basically they do it twice a week. Uh, during weekend, Saturdays and uh, and Sundays. Yeah, and they're uh, f- five and eight. Ah, uh, yeah. The first one, Travis, is gonna be eight in April, and then Ellis has uh, five years since November last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Well-behaved boys, and I guess karate also helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's uh, more of the, the discipline they get from it, and then of course uh, sport. The they are quite big boys, so they have actually lost some few kilograms oh, yeah. since they have started. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, when 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 Travis told me that he was eight, I thought, oh, you look like ten. He's 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 gonna be a big boy. Yeah. 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 They're gonna be uh, maybe as tall as their mother, who's uh, almost one one meter and eighty five or eighty seven. Oh. So, yeah! Wow! Yeah, and you're you're quite tall as well. So. And they also have uh, another big uh, no no a young brother who's actually oh. now eight uh, seven months. He was, he was born in June. Yeah, he's also a boy, a big boy. Yeah. You only produce boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I hope you'll give me a secret of having girls. I, I, I think well, you told me that. Yeah, girl. yeah. Real real men produce girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what people tell me. Radio Vagabund er den ultimative destination for dig, der leder efter inspiration til at tage ud og udforske den virkelige verden og få oplevelser, du aldrig vil glemme. Dette er Radio Vagabund. Ja, yeah, we're zooming in on a small country in the heart of Africa. But don't let the size fool you. It's packed with experiences that will blow you away. They call it the land of a thousand hills for a reason. But these rolling hills are just the start of what makes this place so special. Rwanda is a country that made a stunning turnaround from its troubled past. And this journey isn't just about moving from a difficult chapter to a brighter future. It's about a country that completely reinvented itself. A real underdog story of a nation that come out stronger. Are you ready with that shot glass? Here's the first one. Its capital, Kigali, is known as the cleanest city on the continent. And it's not hard to see why. I've only been to one other city as clean as this one. That was Tokyo, and you know what the Japanese are like. The streets here are spotless. I tell you, you won't even find a cigarette butt, which is a clear sign of the hard work and pride of its people. More on that later. We're in Rwanda and uh, driving around. It's I, I just came from Uganda, where people drive like crazy, and here, <laughs> you, they actually seems like they, they they follow the rules, like uh, staying in the lanes and uh, yeah. not speeding. Yeah, be, be, being sure that it has not been the case. Uh, also, we used to drive like in Uganda, but because of maybe leadership, 
law enforcement, uh, people got to, to be really responsible and respect, uh, how do we call it? In French, they call the law, um, the traffic rules. Traffic rules, yeah. yes. So, uh, in general, we don't exceed 60 kilometers per hour. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, in, in most of the cases, oh no, I'm not most, but uh, we also have areas where we, we cannot exceed 40 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, and it's you got a lot of speed cameras, and then if, if you yeah, if you if you speed, you get a, a, an SMS text. You get an SMS text uh, immediately, instantly, actually. And if you don't check regularly, you can even have like three pictures. We, we call them pictures because it takes yeah, you even yeah, a yeah. picture. And uh, yeah, they, uh, I think when you exceed, let's say, 60 kilometers per hour, you get a twenty-five thousand. How do we call it? Uh, penalty? Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, really a lot for... Yeah, how much is that in US? That's 25 uh, US dollars. Yeah. Almost, yeah. Yeah. But Rwanda offers more than just pretty views and clean sidewalks. And you better fill your shot glass again. It's also incredibly safe. We're talking about the sixth safest country in the world for solo travelers and by far the safest in Africa. It's even ranked higher than my own country, Denmark, when it comes to safety for solo travelers. This is also something we'll get back to in this episode. The memory of the 1994 genocide is still part of this country's history, but it's not the whole story. This country has done more than just recover. It's become a standout example of peace and security in Africa. And and then you can actually pay on your phone. Uh, yes. in, in, uh, I've, I've noticed all over East Africa yeah. that the, the phone is something Mobile that you... Mobile money works yeah, very well. You can pay with your phone without actually and going it's, there. And it's actually the phone companies that, that do that because yeah. we, we can pay with the phone, but it's connected to a bank, so you have to transfer money, but using a bank's app. But here, no, it's actually cash, the... Cashless... Um, yeah transaction work pretty well you can pay in restaurants you can pay school fees for your kids using your phone so yeah. so you just put some money on your phone actually yes. so to speak and yeah. then you can yeah, yeah. use that you, yeah. yeah you can get yeah actually you can even uh, there is a what what did they uh, what is called pull and push so from your bank account when you get paid you can just transfer money from your bank account To, to your phone mm -hmm. yeah and you can do all transaction if you want to pay rent school fees yeah, and, and obviously transfer from from to your friend uh, if they if you are sharing a bill at a restaurant or something yeah. you can just oh you owe me uh, 20 bob uh, yes yeah. yeah so actually I think you can spend days weeks without touching cash yeah yeah but having said that I can also pay with card but compared to Kenya and Uganda where I just came from it's this is more like a cash country if you don't have mobile money yeah if you don't have mobile money um, I think yeah yeah you can card. use the card in yeah. many places yeah. but most places they say oh I prefer cash they prefer cash they prefer more mobile money yeah uh, maybe in hotels they can in hotels uh, supermarkets Not all businesses uh, have uh, no. The small shops they they absolutely prefer yeah. Uh, yeah. Prefer cash. Yeah. Radio Vagabond. Skal vi videre? Og nu fakta om hvor vi er. Fakta om hvor vi er. Nestled in the heart of Africa, Rwanda is a landlocked country that borders Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Hvor stort og hvor mange mennesker? Rwanda might be small in size, covering approximately 27,000 square kilometers, 10,400 square miles, a bit bigger than West Virginia and slightly smaller than Belgium that occupied them for years. And it has a population of around 12.6 million people. Officielle sprog In Rwanda you hear a mix of languages, with Kinyarwanda, French, English and Swahili being the main ones. English really took off after Rwanda joined the Commonwealth in 2009. It's widely used, especially among young and professionals, 
so you'll find a good number of people that you can chat to in English, even if there's a bit of accent. Stefan and I will dive into that in a minute. Religion. Rwanda is mostly Christian, with the majority of the population being Catholic or Protestant. But there's also a presence of Muslims and indigenous beliefs. Flag. The flag of Rwanda is a symbol of hope and progress. It has three horizontal bands in the colors sky blue, yellow and green. The blue represents peace and hope for a brighter future. The yellow symbolizes the country's economic potential. And the green stands for the prosperity of its land. In the upper right corner of their flag, there's a golden sun that represents knowledge and progress. Rwandan sayings really show the wisdom of the place. There's one that goes something like this. God hangs out everywhere during the day but chooses to sleep in Rwanda. It's their way of saying that their country is stunningly beautiful and peaceful. And another one that's about the value of putting in a good day's work. He who works well has God's support. It's like saying if you do your job well, you'll have God on your side. And it's their nod to how much they respect hard work and doing the right things. Otiva Fakta on Bovia. Radio Vagabond podcast er delvis sponsoreret af Hotels25.dk. Det er en hjemmeside, der hjælper dig med at finde de billigste priser på hoteller rundt omkring i verden. Hotels25.dk Dette er Radio Vagabond. Let's get back to the thing about it being so clean. Kigali, the country's capital, is often dubbed the cleanest city on the continent. The government, led by President Paul Kagame, really wanted to clean up the nation after the tough times it went through. Rwanda, especially the capital, is super clean. And it's all thanks to the hard work and teamwork of the government and the people. This didn't just happen in a snap. It's been a big team effort. Yeah, it's so clean. That's also part of leadership and um, education. And uh, yeah, the population here really owned that. And uh, as uh, we are discussing, we have what we call Umuganda. You call what? Umuganda is uh, when pe- people meet every last Saturday of a month. A cornerstone of Rwanda's cleanliness is the national initiative known as Umuganda meaning coming together in common purpose. This community workday is mandatory for all citizens aged 18 to 65, rich and poor, and it takes place on the last Saturday of every month. It's like a big neighborhood cleanup party. They clean streets, fix up public places, and do lots of other helpful stuff. Yeah, it means uh, it's like working together Yeah, yeah. For, for one common goal. Yeah, yeah. And people really backed that up. There weren't yes. anyone who said, oh, I had a party village, last night, I, I got to sleep. Yeah. Every village used to gather in one place and say, today we're going to clean this road. Uh, yeah, and, and it worked. Umaganda isn't just about cleaning. It's about everyone working together and feeling good about their community. It's said that even the president rolls up his sleeves and helps out. Rwanda has become a real example of how teamwork can make your surroundings not just cleaner, but also a nicer place for everyone to live. Another big move, and get ready for another shot, something Rwanda was the first in the world to do, banning plastic bags. They did this all the way back in 2008, and they take it very seriously. It's not just about not using plastic bags within the country, They even go as far as stopping them at the borders. So if you're traveling to Rwanda, you should be prepared to leave your plastic bags behind. At points of entry, like airports and land borders, they actually check your luggage, even the checked-in bags, four plastic bags, and may confiscate them if found. And if you're caught with a plastic bag, either at the border or on the streets, you might have to pay a fine. Kids also learn about keeping things tidy right from school. They're taught why it's important to keep the environment clean 
and how littering is bad news for everyone. The rules about keeping things clean are also pretty strict. That if you litter, you might also have to pay a fine. Yeah, and you and you say it's leadership, but it's like wow, it must be strong leadership uh, to because Rwanda is so different than mm-hmm. other countries uh, in in that sense. Yeah, but but also as I told you, it's a process. So it's more of uh, educating people so that it can become culture actually. Uh-huh. As I told you it has not been like this uh, since but uh, it was a process and now it has become a culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's look in the history book. The president Paul Kagame has been at the helm of Rwanda's transformation since the end of the genocide in 1994 serving first as vice president and then president from 2000. He's won multiple elections and is running again at the general election to be held in July 24. Here he's running for a historic fourth term. Under Kagame's watch, Rwanda has seen impressive development and growth. He's known for his strong, hands-on leadership, which has been both praised for bringing stability and criticized for being overly controlled. The political space in Rwanda is tight, with Kagame keeping a firm grip on power. Technically, Rwanda is a democracy. They hold elections, and they do have multiple political parties. But observers outside of Rwanda often question how free and fair these elections are, pointing out that there's not much room for opposition against Kagame. So Kagame is holding a tight rope on his power, But still, many believe that after the 1994 genocide, Rwanda needed a strong leader, someone to rebuild and heal. Kagame's approach has brought security and unity, plus safety and clean streets, and a country without plastic bags. But it also meant limited political freedom. So it's a complex picture. And while Kagame's leadership has driven Rwanda's progress, It's also shaped a political landscape that leaves little room for dissent. Har du nogensinde undret dig over, hvordan steder, der omtales i podcasten, ser ud? Så skal du overveje at følge Radio Vagabund på Instagram. Du skal bare søge efter Radio Vagabund. And I was surprised because before coming here, I didn't know a lot about it i it's kind of like colombia that has this reputation of it being so dangerous mm-hmm. and it's not anymore it was obviously in the 90s with the, the whole escobar and the drug cartels and all of that but now it's quite safe and still to this day they have the reputation and obviously when we hear the name rwanda yeah obviously we think about the dark history back in the mid 90s and then Yeah, is it is it a safe country? I don't know. And you then know, I, 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 I also witnessed that. So having traveled to now fourteen African countries, five European countries, plus the US, four states of the US, I started traveling in those countries back in two thousand and six, and wherever I was getting, showing my Rwandan passport. By then, they were saying, ah, that country that had genocide, how, how did you survive? Is there still war? Yeah. So the country was more recognized of a dangerous place, as you said. Yeah. So I continued traveling, but when uh, around like 2010, 2005, the story started to change. Whenever I was showing my passport, they were saying, wow, Karanda! Mm. Good, good story. I will like what you are achieving. It's a, it's a clean country. It's a peaceful country. It's a mm-hmm. country that actually now is helping others. Yeah, and you're like the 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 model country of of yeah. of this whole region. Maybe so, even for all of Africa. Yeah. So all of that has a story behind, yeah. and uh, that's maybe what people want to discover when they are coming. They want to see to come and take lessons. How can a country come from a ruin? Yeah to such a success story. So I'm very glad that, uh, yeah. yeah. So that's why I say it's a, it's a leadership, it's a process. It's actually also a ownership of the people yeah. to really uh, accept to change, and it is very mm-hmm. possible. Yeah. So now, 
I bet I've already shared a few things about Rwanda you didn't know. When we don't know much about every single country in the world, you might be one of the people that thought that this little Central African country was a dangerous place. You might be thinking, hmm, Rwanda, isn't that where they kill people with machetes? Or at least, it must be a lot more dangerous than my home country. And that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, it's more likely much safer than your country. Have a listen. And now, is there law and order in this country? Law and order in Rwanda is quite remarkable, especially when you consider where the country was just a few decades ago. The country has made significant strides in establishing a sense of safety and security, which is evident in various aspects. How is the crime rate here? Rwanda is often noted for its low crime rate, especially when it comes to violent crimes. The streets of Kigali and other towns are generally safe, and you will often see people walking around at night without much worry. That said, like in any country, petty crimes and pickpocketing or small thefts can occur, especially in crowded areas. But overall, the crime rate is relatively low compared to many other countries. Is it safe here? The feeling of safety in Rwanda is one of the country's strong points. After the turmoil in the past, the government placed a high priority on security. There's a visible police presence and community policing is taken seriously. The concept of neighborhood watch is strong and communities often work closely with local authorities to maintain safety. This approach has been quite effective in preventing crime and ensuring that residents and visitors feel safe. Is there corruption here? On the corruption front, Rwanda has a relatively good track record, especially in comparison to some of the other countries in this region. The government has taken a hard stance against corruption with various measures in place to combat it. Transparency International Corruption Perception Index often ranks Rwanda as one of the least corrupt countries in Africa. But it's worth noticing that while high-level corruption is less, more everyday forms of corruption can still pose challenges and are often hard to root out entirely. So Rwanda really stepped up when it comes to keeping things safe and orderly. Crime's pretty low, and people generally feel safe walking around, plus they've cracked down on corruption big time. All of this has made a huge difference, turning Rwanda into a place where folks feel secure, and that's a big deal for the country's vibe and reputation. It's so funny how reputation sticks. We just parked. Where, where, where are we? So this is called Kigali Height. Kigali Height. It has shops, it has... Uh... A very nice coffee that I like. Uh, I need it's, coffee. It's Java coffee. Yeah. yeah. Saturday morning and I need coffee. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you will also know that Rwanda has one of the best coffee in terms of quality. So I've <laughs> The reason I'm laughing because every time I go to a coffee producing country, they say, oh, we have the, the best, best coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Italians when they say they have the best wine and when you go to France, they tell you the same story. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, but I went to Milan. I saw uh, was a, an expo of coffees, and Rwanda and Uganda, yes, they were the best ones. Yeah. So I don't know in other countries. Maybe Ethiopia will bra- <laughs> brag about it. <laughs> well, we but will try. Yeah, let's go and try. Yeah. Let's go and try. By now, we've established that Rwanda has many records, the safest country in Africa, the cleanest country, and one of the first to have a ban on plastic bags. As I walk inside with Stefan to get the best coffee in the world, let's take a little break, and when we come back, I have two more surprising records for you. Something that I also bet you didn't know, so you better fill up two shot glasses this time. I'll be right back. Hvis du har lyttet til Radio Vakabund et stykke tid, ved du et par ting om Pallebo. Se, nu vil han gerne vide noget om dig. Så du vil gøre ham en stor tjeneste ved at deltage i en fem minutters lytterundersøgelse. 
Svar på et par spørgsmål på radiovagabund.dk Skråstrej, hvem er du? Before we dive back in, I've got a little update for you. Remember those vagabond shorts I've started doing? There are these snappy 10-minute episodes packed with travel nuggets to spice up your weekends and your future travels. And they also come with a visual flair on my YouTube channel and our Facebook group. Now here's the inside scoop on how they get that polished look. I'm collaborating with this amazing team at a company called VidPros. These people are like the video wizards. But the best part, even though they have a whole squad of pro editors, I get to work with my own dedicated editor. It's like having a personal stylist for your videos. My editor, she gets to know my vibe, my style, and make sure that every video feels like the Radio Vagabond. So I record my piece, send it over, and the VidPro editor takes the wheel from there. They find and stitch in perfect clips, add those seamless transitions, and suddenly my shorts aren't just audio gems, but visual stunners too. If you need a video producer, I highly recommend VidPros. And because you're riding along with the Radio Vagabond, I got a treat for you. Use promo code VAGABOND when you check out VidPros and you get a neat 10% off your first month. So go to vidpros.com, see the kind of magic they do, and don't forget to catch my videos to see the magic in action. Trust me, it's a game changer. Dette, dette er Radio Vagabond. Let's talk a little bit about language. I noticed that you speak French with your kids. I'm basically francophone, and uh, I started learning English when I was uh, maybe 14. Oh. And, uh, yeah. So we, we, I, I basically speak a very nice uh, French, but not that, not that good in, uh, in English. But oh, 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 it's good. Yeah. It's good. I've, I've heard a lot yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Some, and, 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 and sometimes, like in Uganda, they they are famous for speaking the best English in 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 Africa. But still, there's a dialect, and sometimes they speak very fast. So I found I find you more easy to understand than some of the people I spoke to in Uganda and Kenya, for that matter. Uh, yeah, I'm a quick learner. Per, per, maybe yeah, yeah, I had yeah. yeah, yeah. For instance, I spent almost two years in Italy, and I could understand everything. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I don't think I might uh, really learn quickly Danish. No. no. When you are writing, you put some. Yeah, some we sign. have we have <laughs> three funny letters uh, that yeah. <laughs> is uh, very f- f- just for Scandinavia. But uh, yeah, and don't don't learn Danish because there's there's really no need for that. <laughs> there's no need for that. Yeah. French is one of the official languages. Yes, Rwanda has four official languages. The first one being Kenya Rwanda. Uh-huh. Actually, Rwanda speaks one language, and uh, it's not common in Africa. Uh-huh. Uh, then we have uh, uh, French, uh-huh. then English, and then Swahili. So every language has a, a story behind. I told you Kenya Rwanda because it's our national uh-huh. language spoken by everyone in Rwanda, or should be spoken by every Rwandan <laughs> at least. Then French is because Rwanda uh, was colonized by Belgians. Yeah. So uh, for many years, French was the official language. That was the only official language for many years. Uh, yes, especially maybe in administration or whatever because of the history of Rwanda. Then English came um, mostly after um, Rwanda genocide because we had um, many Rwandans who were refugees uh, in Anglophone countries. So when they came back, they couldn't speak uh, French. Mm-hmm. So we introduced English also as, a, as an official language. And uh, if you, I don't know if you know, now Rwanda is a part of Commonwealth. I found it interesting that Rwanda joined the Commonwealth because they've never been part of the British Empire. The decision to join back in 2009 was based on Rwanda's desire to strengthen its international relations, promote economic development and enhance cooperation with other countries. 
overall joining the Commonwealth aligns with Rwanda's efforts to integrate into the global community and pursue its development goals. And that is one of the reasons why English is now one of their official languages. But the main local language is Kinyarwanda. So let's learn to say a few of the most important words and phrases. And now, Radio Vagabund Sprogskole. Hello. Muraho. Hello. Muraho. What do you say when people say hello to you? Yego. What do you say when people say hello to you? Yego. Welcome. Murakazanez. Welcome. Murakazanez. Okay. Okay is the same. Okay, yego. Okay. Okay, yego. Two beers, please. Jerry Ebjiri. Two beers, please. Jerry Ebjiri. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Og det var Radiovagabund Sprogskole. While we were going to school, Stefan got a call from a friend, and I overheard many different languages. A language I didn't understand. I noticed a little bit of bonjour and sawa sawa, which is thank you in Swahili. Yeah. But were you speaking Swahili or? So we started with bonjour, which is French. Then we migrated to Swahili. We spoke Swahili for like two minutes. Then we went back to Kenya Rwanda. <laughs> so that is us, actually. <laughs> so we can mix the four languages. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we speak Kenya Rwanda, mix with French, our French. Sometimes we call it Franglais. Franglais? <laughs> Franglais, which means uh, it is French mixed with English. Yeah, we, we speak Danglish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was conversing with him in uh, yeah. We spoke like actually four languages. Oh well, yeah, yeah. French mixed with English. We started with French and then Kinyarwanda. Yeah, and <laughs> all of that was just to throw me off. And uh, <laughs> okay, I promised you two more surprising facts about Rwanda. Here's number one: Rwanda leads the world in terms of female representation in national parliaments. As of recent years, over 60% of Rwanda's parliament members are women. And that is the highest percentage in any country globally. This is a result of deliberate policies to promote gender equality. Maybe we could learn from them. And if you think that Rwanda is a third world country where they only do a bit of coffee some handicraft and farming, think again. In fact, they launched the world's first commercial drone delivery service, transporting medical supplies and blood to remote areas of the country. Rwanda partnered with a company called Zipline, and this innovative approach have saved lives and set an example for other countries to follow. So, please. Uh, okay, we got we got the coffee. Now we're gonna find out if it's actually as good as you say. Yeah, I laughed because I've heard the sentence "We make the best coffee in the world" in so many countries, especially when I was traveling through Central America, but also here in Africa, and even when I was in Bali and tasted the famous Lua coffee. You know, where the beans have been swallowed by a cat and later pooped out before being turned into coffee. That was also the best coffee in the world. But Stefan might not be totally off. Rwanda's reputation in the coffee world has been on a steady rise, with its beans being recognized by experts for their unique flavors and high quality. They have good soil in the hills and a good climate for coffee production. So Rwandan coffee farms are able to produce beans that are rich in flavor with a fruity and pleasant sweet taste. The country's coffee industry has also become a symbol of its resilience and economic recovery. Coffee has played a significant role in rebuilding the nation's economy and providing a livelihood for thousands of farmers, many of whom are smallholders working together in cooperatives. So while Rwanda might not top the charts of quantity, When it comes to quality and the story behind the beans, it stands out as a remarkable player in the world of coffee. Yeah, it is good. It is good. Did you put sugar? No. I want to taste the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Stefan, you, you you told me that your friends call you Steph, so I'm I, I feel now we had breakfast and coffee. 
I'm going to start calling you Steph. Is yes. that okay? <laughs> yeah, no problem. You have even uh, the guy who just called me on yeah. the phone was calling me Steph. In the next episode from Rwanda, next Travel Tuesday, I'll speak more to Steph. And we'll be talking about something that most people associate with the country. Something we've mentioned a few times in this one. The 1994 genocide. I next week, on Radio so when she came back in 94, she was, everyone was killed. Everyone? Yeah, everyone. So when she's counting her siblings and their children, she lost 55 members of her family. She no longer has uh, even one sibling. I'll also go to Kigali Genocide Memorial to learn more about this tragedy. And then I'll be heading to the northern part of the country, close to the border of Uganda, to see some of those thousand hills and go on a hike. And when we get to the top, I'm blown away with the views. This would be where I would build a, a guest house. <laughs> this will be total little paradise for <laughs> yeah. each and everyone who's reaching on the top of this place. You've been listening to The Radio Vagabond. Please stand clear of the closing doors. My name is Palapo and I gotta keep moving. See ya. Radio Vagabond. Produced by Radio Guru. The cool.